Hi, I'm Maddie. Thanks for joining us. Let's look at what's going on in the economy. In our May video, we talked about tariffs and global uncertainty, two key forces that have been shaping the global economy this year. Since then, the United States has made deals with many of its trading partners. Most of these agreements include a US tariff rate between 15 and 20 percent. Australia's tariff rate, however, is still 10 percent. To put that in perspective, the average tariff rate in the US is now the highest it's been since the 1930s, during the Great Depression, a time when global trade was heavily restricted. Let's do a quick recap on tariffs. A tariff is a tax placed on goods imported from another country, which makes those items more expensive. When prices go up, people look for cheaper options, like buying similar products produced locally, or from other countries where tariffs are lower. Higher tariffs can slow down economic activity around the world, including in Australia. To understand how, Let's use a concept you might have heard before, aggregate demand. This shows the total spending in the economy, including household consumption, business investment, government spending, and net exports. Here's how tariffs can affect aggregate demand. First, tariffs make imported goods more expensive, so people tend to buy less of them. All else equal, countries facing tariffs sell less of these goods which reduces their export revenue and could slow their economic growth. Second, trade tensions create significant uncertainty. When households and businesses aren't sure what's going to happen, they might play it safe and decide to save instead of spending. For example, your family might delay buying a new TV or going on a holiday. Or suppose you're a coffee shop owner who wants to buy a new coffee machine. But since the economic environment is uncertain, you might decide to wait. When these decisions are all added up, it could lead to slower growth in consumption and investment, which would also slow economic activity. This graph shows how uncertainty has changed over time. There's still a lot of uncertainty, but it's not as much as before. So how has the global economy responded to higher tariffs so far? Well, businesses in other countries are changing how they trade, and that's helping to reduce the impact of tariffs on economic activity. For example, countries like China are finding new markets to sell their products. Since April, China's exports to the United States have declined, but exports to other advanced economies and East Asia have increased. We've talked about the impact of tariffs on economic activity, but what about the effect on inflation? like in Australia. To understand this, we need to look at both aggregate demand as well as aggregate supply, which shows the total amount of goods and services the economy can produce. Tariffs on exports from Australia and on our biggest trading partners, along with heightened uncertainty, can cause aggregate demand to fall. This puts downward pressure on prices across a range of goods and services and leads to lower inflation but there's also a supply side effect. Tariffs can disrupt global supply chains, making it harder or more expensive to get parts from overseas. It can also lower productivity and raise the cost of production. All of this means the economy can't produce as much as before. This causes the aggregate supply to decrease, which pushes up prices. The key thing to note is that demand and supply effects are pulling in opposite directions. One will decrease inflation and the other will increase it. Let's put it all together. While the supply channel will push up prices, we think the demand channel will be stronger, represented by a larger shift in the demand curve. So overall, we expect these tariff-related effects to put a bit of downward pressure on prices. So a lot is happening in the global economy at the moment. But what about the Australian economy? The RBA's Monetary Policy Board decided to lower the cash rate to 3.6% at its August meeting. Why did the board decide to lower the cash rate? Let's take a moment to zoom out. The RBA's monetary policy decisions are guided by two key objectives, which is sometimes called a dual mandate. 
The first objective is price stability, or low and stable inflation. And the second is full employment, which means that people who want a job can find one without having to search for too long. So let's take a look at how inflation and the labour market have evolved over time. In this chart, the blue line shows underlying inflation over time. Underlying inflation is different to the headline consumer price inflation that you might hear reported in the news, because it excludes unusually large price changes. By taking out very large price increases and declines, underlying inflation provides a better understanding of overall inflation trends. Inflation started to rise in 2021, driven by strong demand, supply chain disruptions, and higher global energy prices. In response, the RBA raised the cash rate from near zero to 4.35% over 2022 and 2023. The tightening of monetary policy helped bring demand and supply closer to balance. As a result, inflation has come down significantly. The latest data shows that underlying inflation was 2.7% in the June quarter, its lowest level since late 2021, and within the RBA's target band of 2-3%. This is a major milestone and shows that monetary policy has been working as intended. Importantly, the labour market has been resilient over this period. In this chart, the red line shows the unemployment rate over time. The unemployment rate tracks people who are actively looking for a job but don't have one. Despite higher interest rates, the unemployment rate stayed low, sitting at 4.3% in June, only slightly higher than earlier in the year. Labour force participation is also strong and employment continues to grow. This is a good result for Australia. Inflation has come down without a sharp rise in unemployment. Let's sum up. The board decided it was appropriate to lower the cash rate. Underlying inflation has continued to decline back towards the midpoint of the 2-3% target range, and labour market conditions have eased only slightly and as expected. However, the outlook remains uncertain, and the board will continue to watch the data closely and monitor how risks are evolving. The board noted that monetary policy is well-placed to respond to global developments if they were to impact growth and inflation in Australia. So that's our summary of current economic conditions. For more information on tariffs or other student resources, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching.